All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from a sunny San Diego. Today, I'm delighted to be joined from Brunswick, Ohio by Jason Zigadlo. How are you doing, Jason? I'm doing very well, John. How are you today? Doing great. And what Good. we're going to talk, yeah, and we're going to talk about today is harnessing the power of personalized videos to stand out. Jason's a seasoned expert, nearly 20 years in the med devices sales, now channels his unique skills into, as you can see behind you, build.your.ownbrand. Uh, and he helps individuals and organizations stand out creatively. Uh, you're also dedicated to your nonprofit, Ziggy Strong, and enjoys family time, college football, and Lake Erie. Okay. So, Jason, first of all, yes. um, let's talk about the power of personalized videos, right? Uh, I mean, obviously, it's become a lot easier today to be able to produce videos. Um, but I feel like, as often happens with things, is the the tools become available. They become easier to do but the reason you're doing them and the strategy behind them, sometimes people don't do that homework first. This is true. You know, the personalized video for me, John, is, is taking my business as a medical device sales rep mm -hmm. and then now the founder of Build Your Own Brand working with clients to teach them the same tactics and tricks of using personalized uh, videos to be different. You know, when you talk about someone who's looking for employment, uh, you know, there's a stack of resumes on, on folks' desk, right? And so I always talk to people about how do you be different and memorable? And my good friend, Matthew Ray Scott talks about breaking out of the sea of sameness. Mm. How do you do that, right? And so the personalized videos is a tool to, to implement to do that. I tell people as a, it's very versatile, right? So, yeah. you know, there's some platforms out there. And what I like, John, are the analytics. Some of the the platforms offer you, I know when the video was opened, I know how long it was watched. And mm -hmm. when we're busy salespeople driving around trying to engage with, you know, busy surgeons or whoever it is mm -hmm. that you're trying to reach, you know, you can go to the office and leave your information with Gloria, the gatekeeper, but chances are it's not making it back yeah. to, the, to the, the end user, right? And so mm -hmm. when you get the email or cell phone or whatever it is, and you send them a personalized video and then you see them open it. it it's, it's amazing. My engagement went through the roof once I start implementing these strategies. Right. And so what are some of the elements that you need to do in order to create an engaging video? Because one of the traps I see people fall into sometimes is they think that they have to be someone else when it's a video. You know, they have to sort of take on a persona or they have to be yes. like really upbeat and in your face even yes. if that's not who they are. And it kind of, it kind of, you know, it, it jibes a little bit. It's such a great point. I tell people all the time, number one, you know, the fear of imposter syndrome, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the, the, people are afraid to get in front of the camera. Are people going to listen to what I say? How do I look? Um, and then I think secondly, it's this, I don't know how to use the platform. I don't feel comfortable in front of the camera. Mm -hmm. But all of that aside, we're not professional news anchors or, yeah. or you know, folks that that do. I, I think it shows the authenticity and the genuineness of someone. So, for example, you know, if you were someone and I knew that perhaps there was a, a job opening and you were a hiring manager and I knew that position was was available, it would go something like this. Hey, John, it's Jason Z. Gadlow here. Listen. I came across the opening with sales pop and I wanted to reach out to you in a more creative and personalized way. It looks like that opportunity fits my background nicely. Listen, I'm going to send in my resume. I just wanted to give you a heads up, kind of put a face with the name and, um, and just let you know that I'm super excited to learn more about the opportunity. Right. That separates people so differently when it comes to, you know, employment, we'll say a job search. Yeah. And and that's so and that if you like is so um, elegant and non threat. I mean, it's not in, in it's not an imposition. You're not you're not asking for anything. I mean, you're literally just saying hi, just quick one. This is who I am. Putting a face to the name, as we used to Absolutely. say. Absolutely. Uh, and and it's nice. It, 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 it's it's nice. But I guess you just come back to imposter syndrome because I always tell people actually we just did a white paper recently. I always tell people about imposter syndrome is as long as you are. 
as long as you try to authentically be who you are, don't yes. pretend to be somebody else, and don't pretend that you know more than you know, then you can't, by definition, be an imposter. When you start putting on an act and you start pretending you know more than you are, well, then, you know, you work it out for yourself. Uh, but I always think it comes down to is um, be honest about what you know and what you don't know and, and who you are and who, who you're not. Yes, I think that's I think well said. Um, I tell people this exact same thing all the time. And I do believe the technology has been out for a little while, but mm -hmm. you know, from uh, a show of hands, every time I give a presentation or I speak in front of large groups, the, the hands that go up are very minimal when you talk about A, who's received a personalized video by using their name and making it very personal to them, or on the contrary, has anyone in the group sent a personalized video? It's still so underutilized, but so different. And, and again, I, I talk to people, John, about attention is the new currency. Yep. If you're not finding a way to be different and memorable, then you're missing out. And the personalized videos are one of those professional ways to do that. I mean, and I'm talking to companies now, the blue collar folks, imagine a roofing company, a, uh, yeah. a fencing company, all of these companies. Uh, hey, you know, John, it's Jason. I work for XYZ roofing company i just wanted to say thank you for allowing my team to provide a quote we know how crowded it is in the northeastern ohio market with other you know companies that do the same work something like that just hits differently it puts that white glove touch on a blue collar industry yeah and and also, Jan, yeah, like I said, it makes you feel more comfortable because you're seeing like who the person are. But it is amazing, um, uh, Jason. And why do you think it is? It is amazing that a lot of salespeople still haven't embraced this, you know. And to be honest, a lot of salespeople struggled early on when you know when they had to go remote. Struggled early on with with being on camera for Zoom. I mean, sometimes people who are fantastic networking in rooms, great presenting in front of people in boardrooms or whatever would just struggle when it's suddenly they're faced with a camera. Yes. Yeah, it, it is so true. And in fact, I mean, candidly, I was that guy. I mean, I'm, a, I'm an in-person guy, like mm -hmm. to shake your hand, look you in the eye. And so this is a little bit different. But you bring up a great point, uh, John. During COVID, when everyone was communicating via Zoom or Teams, again, and everybody's inbox was being flooded with mm -hmm. more emails, I use the personalized videos to take my email and again, kind of break out of what I call the sea of sameness and send an email that's now a video. And I can tell you this, when I would put my bobblehead on say, for example, your LinkedIn page or whomever it was that I was trying to communicate with, people are looking at that going, wow, I think that's my LinkedIn page. And who is this stranger that I've never met? What do you think they're gonna do? They click on it. Oh, yeah. And, and so, you know, again, I, I think the, the use of the technology, for me anyway, really erupted during COVID, to your point, mm -hmm. because we were communicating this way, and I was already getting comfortable from the Zoom and the Teams calls. I right. said, hey, well, I have nothing to lose. Let me try this platform. And so off I went, sending videos, sending videos. And I tell you, the efficiency of that, John, when you are a sales rep covering a large territory, there's nothing more deflating than driving two hours away, going to visit Gloria, yep. the gatekeeper, dropping off your information, asking to see the customer. And they go, no, he's busy. And you go, yeah. I kind of figured. Now, if I'm sending these videos, I'm watching them get open. They're doing it at their time and at their convenience. And then oftentimes, full disclosure, they're looking at me, John, and going, hey, I think we've met already. And I always chuckle because I'm going, no, you just seen me through my videos. Right, so right. It's been fantastic. Yeah, and what what's it, uh, what I think is interesting and kind of the challenge then is like how do you how do you engage through the video? It's like because the last thing you want is you know sometimes you see again like I said people who are maybe not as comfortable they sure. can sometimes it can come off like hostage videos you know yeah <laughs> are just there staring like trying to say what I have here in my script in front of me. Um, so yeah. how do you do it? So uh, again, so it, it connects like, you know, it, it, cause it's obviously a, it's a visual medium and it's a medium that can um, elicit emotion and stuff. So how do you, what are some best practices in using it? Yeah, it, it's really a good question. I tell people you have to practice, right? It's mm -hmm. like anything, it's uncomfortable. 
you know, you have to challenge yourself to, you know, be, be comfortable being uncomfortable. I tell folks that, you know, you have to, uh, I, I, for me, it was the practice. I mean, it, re it really was. And then after I got a few of them out there, it wasn't so scary anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you kind of, you, you get a response back and you kind of say to yourself, wow, you know, this, this actually works. And yep. so, you know, the practice part of it for me, I think, you know, and, and how I tell my clients too, you have to get in front of the camera and listen, again, it goes alluding back to what I was saying earlier in the conversation, John, we are not professionals. Sometimes yeah. I have an extra um or an uh. And, you know, I actually I gave a talk at the University of Akron and I created some videos to put in my slides. And one of the videos, you know, it was not my best work. I, you know, I was kind of choppy. It was a little um, uh, but I left it. And here's why. As I was giving the talk and we came up on this video and we all watched it, everyone seemed to just look at it just fine. I was very hypercritical of it, but mm -hmm. I left. And then when I start to call out some of my mistakes, I saw some people in the audience go, oh, yeah, OK. But I did that on purpose because here's the thing. I want people to be genuine and authentic and show their natural selves because, you know, I think those are the people that I like to listen to, yeah. that I gravitate to. Um, I don't want to see the scripted robots. I want to see someone who has a little personality. And again, I think with practice, you can kind of develop, you know, who you are in front of the camera just uh, just by putting in a little of the work. No, I, and I agree. And I think uh, and I think people also want to see they want to see your kind of brain working in real time. They don't want to think that, as you said, that you're reading off cue cards or that you're, you know, because then it just comes across again, inauthentic. But I mean, practice, I think is a key one is practicing and then sending your video to maybe some trusted people who give you good feedback, but maybe yes. like, will will be, um, you know, will will be a little careful with you at the beginning so they don't crush you completely. So th those are always good people to start with. Yes. And I think some of the platforms too, John, they actually have some um, ability to type in what you do want to say. And yeah. then the, the screen kind of scrolls as fast or as slow as you want. So, you know, for the folks that are just getting started, I tell them, hey, it's your comfort level. Get used to it. Practice, practice, practice. And before you know it, you don't need any of the little prompters. You're just kind of having a natural conversation and people appreciate that. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree. And I think that's what it is at the end of the day is they want to feel like um, they want to feel like you're somebody that they could trust and have a conversation with somebody who's actually going to be interested in, in, in what they want to talk about. Yes, I tell people all the time, you have to develop no like and trust just mm. in general. And I mean, these, yeah. and especially in sales, those are the people that people purchase from that people buy from, you know, I think too, John, it's it's important to, to point out the versatility of the videos. So for example, you know, I, I talked a little bit about how you can use them if you're a job seeker and reaching out to a potential employer. Um, I, I coach a lot of businesses on how to thank their customers, customers that they've worked so hard to earn for the last X amount of years. And maybe this customer has been loyal for X amount of years. How about a nice video to just say, hey, John, it's Jason. Listen, I haven't reached out to you to just say thank you. You know, we value the relationship. You know, we're really looking forward to the, you know, upcoming years ahead. But I just wanted to let you know we value what we've created. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You know, that goes a long way. I've done demos, uh, John, of products. Very quick, Dr. So-and-so, let me just show you how the product works in three easy steps. Boom, boom, boom. And I try to keep the videos to around a minute, no longer than in a minute and a half. There's some research out there that suggests that after that point, you yeah. start to lose your audience. And, and I tend to agree, because when I look at the analytics, I can see how long my video is, and then I can see how long it was watched. And so I use that to kind of help me in the future, mm -hmm. you know, be a little more concise and kind of okay. tweak things a little bit differently. So it's a lot of practice. Yeah, yeah, you want to deliver a, a good, succinct, uh meaningful message but you don't want to deliver the gettysburg address or anything correct like correct and uh and one of the things you know also that uh that uh you referred to there is that idea of you know because you've made the video it has a little bit more authenticity more so than you could send that thank you email for being thank you for renewing and being a customer but let's face it you know that's probably come out of some automation right yes and it's nice to get but it's not going to stop your day go oh that's really nice i got that email 
But if I got the video, because you're saying, oh, thank you, I thank you for renewing. It's great, you know, your customer, great 12 months we've had, looking forward, blah, 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 whatever it is. I know that you made a bit of an effort there. Yes, when you sprinkle in some personalized thing that then the other person that's receiving the video goes, knows, wow, okay, mm -hmm. they that's they really took some time to do a little research or to add something in there to really personalize it. It goes a long way. I will tell you this, I received one personalized video in my entire life. It was from a real estate agent, but the way it was, it, they used one of the, the you know more popular platforms, which when mm -hmm. I received it, I thought, okay, cool, but they never used my name, John. And that immediately told me that they were using that video. They curated this, this great video, but yeah. they wanted to use it to the masses. Yeah. And I'm like, you're missing the point. Yeah, yeah, These are yeah. personalized videos, right? So yeah. I, I kind of chuckled when I opened it and listened to it thinking, wow, you know, I don't know how many other people received this same video. You're missing the boat here. Yeah. And it's almost the same if you think about it is like the way AI is going and eventually you'll be able to go, okay, like here, clone Jason, clone his voice, everything. So now I could, but again, you're going to miss the point if it's not the point of the ease in which you can do it to fool somebody. It's more about the amount of effort you put in because you cared enough about the other person to put some effort in. Yes. Yes. And I, and I will say, you know, there's so many folks that feedback when they get one of these videos is usually instantly, wow, that's cool. I've right. never gotten one of those before. And it, it speaks still to the, you know, again, it's been out for a while, the technology, but the newness yeah. of, you know, it's, it's still really an untapped resource to use in all sorts of ways. My family laughs at me, John, because when I'm traveling, I'll send them a video instead of maybe texting them or right. you know just making a phone call so they can see the background of maybe where I'm at they're always like dad you know they yeah. they now expect these videos when i travel yeah and like i said i mean those just, it's just those are great moments and just um, and just great um, connections and it would, in your business and the people of you've helped um, where have you seen this really some examples not naming them examples of people you've worked with who have really seen this boost their business yeah, you know, the, again, alluding back to what I was saying earlier, the blue collar space, mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of interest uh, in some of these companies wanting to put that white glove touch in a very crowded market. You know, again, when I, you know, I pick on the roofers and the painters and in this industry, mm -hmm. but it's a lot of those folks that are out there handing out a lot of quotes. Again, everyone's doing the same thing the same way. Imagine getting a video if you were needing your house painted, John, and and someone provided a quote that was reasonable compared to some yep. others. And you got someone that said, hey, thanks for allowing us to come into your home, John. I just wanted to reach out to you and just say thank you in a more creative way. Again, it just elevates. It's all about leveling up your business. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah. that's one way. And then secondarily, I would say just the job speakers. You know, it's so hard to find jobs. You know, what are you doing again to be different and memorable and unique? And, and so I tell people, they want to know always, how did I break into medical sales? Right. I stood out in parking lots after I graduated with a shiny folder, with my resume. I made my own business cards. And this is in the early 2000s. Mm -hmm. Anytime I saw a Chevy Impala or a Ford Taurus pull into the medical office building where I was loitering pretty much, uh, I would approach them very nicely and say, hey, listen, can you help me? Here's my resume. This is pre LinkedIn, you know, yep. and little did I know back then when someone got out of the passenger seat, it was a sales manager working with their sales rep uh -huh. for the day doing a ride along. How do you think those managers looked at me? Gritty, creative, yep. tenacious, right? Absolutely. And so I tell people the videos, I'm not asking anyone to loiter in parking lots today, yeah. but what I am saying is that was my way to be different. Mm -hmm. And the videos are helping people do that today. Yeah. And what's interesting, because you alluded to it there, what's interesting or alluded to it earlier is, is um, the brain doesn't really differentiate because like if you send a video and I see you speaking on a video, as you said before, my brain will process that as if we've met. Correct. Much, Correct. It won't do that with an email or even a voice thing, but it'll do that with the video because our brain, you know, will it. it uh, process it in the same way. 
It's so true. Yeah. I, like I said earlier, you know, the, the amount of times someone said, oh, Jason, nice to, mm-hmm. like, to meet you again or see you again. Yeah. And I'm like, no, you just know me from my videos. Right. But right. I would send a, a, a video, John, to a new customer as an introduction. Hey, I'm Jason with XYZ Company. I know we haven't met. Here's the product I represent. Looking forward to meeting you and leave it at that. The second one, it would be something with value, always providing value. Maybe there was a paper, a white paper that came out about the product, not necessarily ever selling anything. That's one piece of advice I will say. I never sold anything through the video platform. Right. Right. And I think that's that's a really good point, but we'll end on here because I think that's an that's an incredibly important point because you can undermine it, like you said, I mean, create something personal, but suddenly it goes straight into a, a sales pitch. It's kind of like that thing that I talk, often talk about here. Sorry to the audience ad nauseum about LinkedIn with the when you get that personal connection request, somebody who's done some research, who's talked about and you hit connect and you think, oh, good, this person actually is research me. And then you get the automated hit. And you're <laughs> the worst, going, right? It's the worst. Going, okay, that's it. Forget that. Yes. But it's uh, but it's the same thing as like if you get a if you've got a video and you're thinking, oh, this is nice to touch it, but then you go straight into a pitch, you just think, oh, okay, this is finding another way to pitch me. Correct. Yeah. yeah. So I always tell all of my clients, do not use it as a sales strategy. That's mm-hmm. not what it's meant for. Perfect. Well, listen, this has been great, Jason. All of Jason's information will be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about you and what you do. Sure. Yeah. My name is Jason Zigadlo. I sold medical devices for 20 years and decided to leave that industry to form and build your own brand. Build your own brands, a company to help people really break out of the sea of sameness, as I mentioned earlier, as it relates to just being different and memorable and creative Mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to job search or for businesses who are trying to do things a little bit differently. And so, yeah, that's that's what we do. We're having a lot of fun doing it and uh, just really passionate about helping people, John, get to where they want to be. Yeah, fantastic. Well, I do encourage you to go check it out and encourage you to go and uh look at um, leveraging video in more creative ways as Jason was outlining here. So thanks again, Jason. Thank you for watching, listening. See you all again soon. Thank you so much for having me.